dealt with it to begin with. I want to ask you about the decision to give uh, the Attorney General this unilateral authority to declassify uh, intelligence. The order says the Attorney General should uh, consult with relevant agency heads, but not that he has to. Do, why did the President not force the Attorney General to consult with, that, with the DNI and the head of the CIA? Here he's giving them unilateral authority not to do it, only saying he should do it, but he doesn't have to. Why? The president has total confidence in the attorney general and his ability but not uh, to the make intelligence those decisions. Community? We expect uh, uh, certainly that's why um, we expect that the attorney general will consult with them on matters that uh, he needs that uh, guidance and advice from them. Certainly, they work in lockstep on a number of things. I don't see this to be any different. The bottom line here is there was a lot of corruption at the FBI and the DOJ. We see constantly more and more things that have come out of that. And the president wants transparency, and he's given the attorney general the ability to put that transparency in place, make those decisions, and we're not uh, like at all concerned that the Attorney General is not going to do everything that is necessary to make sure we're protecting important intelligence that is vital to our national security. I'm trying to understand what outcome the President expects. He's, he tweeted the following, my campaign for President was conclusively spied on. Nothing like this has ever happened in American politics, a really bad situation. Treason means long jail sentences, and this was treason. Why did the president ask the attorney general to do an investigation if he's already come to a conclusion, already decided what the penalty should be, and I think has already determined what the jail sentences should be? Isn't this the president already playing judge and jury and putting his thumb on the scale here for whatever investigation he claims he wants Mr. Barr to do? <laughs> That's pretty rich coming from the media who relentlessly covered and accused the president for over two years of being part of uh, this massive election interference, something that never took place. The idea that anybody now says that the president doesn't have the right, and not only that Americans deserve the truth, to push back and find out where all of this started is absurd. Literally, for day after day after day, the media and Democrats in Congress called the president a traitor to his own country and said that he cheated to become president. I mean, the idea of that is absolutely outrageous that he had to endure that for two years and now he wants to know where and why it started and all of a sudden that's a big deal. That is insane. Sarah, I, think I didn't the ask about him. Exactly no, 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 no. Sarah, and I, I did not America ask. America is glad Sarah, that he's I asking for that transparency. I didn't ask whether he should ask those questions. He's not asking questions anymore. He's already made a judgment. That is much different. He's already, will he accept a result of the Attorney General saying, you know what, everything was done legally and on the up and up, Mr. President. Will he accept that result from Bill Barr? We already know that there was an outrageous amount of corruption that took place uh, at the FBI. They leaked information. They lied. Uh, they were specifically working, trying to take down the president, trying to hurt the president. We'll leave the the final call up to the attorney general and he'll get to the bottom of it but we think americans deserve the truth so he the doesn't president's asked for that and we should expect nothing less so the president is not going to accept exoneration if that's what bill barr finds Look, I'm not going to get ahead of what uh, the final conclusion is, but we already know that there was a high level of corruption that was taking place. Uh, we've seen that in there, there, the IG investigation that's already which is happened. But there's a lot yet. more there that we still need to know, and we're going to let the attorney general do his job. Well, it sounds like you're not. That's my point. It doesn't sound like you want him to do his job. It sounds like you've, the president has already determined the outcome. Chuck, that's the reason that he's granted the attorney general the authority uh, to declassify that information, to look at all the documents necessary, is so that we can get to the very Does bottom of what happened. Once again, we already know about some wrongdoing. The president's not wrong in that, but he wants to know everything that happened and how far and how wide it went. Does we he know expect, that there was corruption. Let's see. Does he expect criminal charges? Does he expect he's accused James Comey of treason? Does he expect Jim Comey to be arrested? Again, we're going to let the Attorney General make that determination as he gets to the conclusion of this investigation. So the President and but we he's certainly not going expect to accept the people that were responsible is, and that were part of this out. Uh, 
unprecedented uh, obstruction and corruption at the FBI. Those people should certainly right. be held responsible and be held accountable, and the president expects that to take place. So he expects an outcome that he wants, not an outcome that the facts lead to. Uh, Chuck, I, I think you're trying to muddy the waters too much here. We already know <laughs> once we, again uh, that there was wrongdoing. I think now what's we want to know how much there was. Waters. I don't think that's uh, that's. Uh, <laughs> I'm, well, I don't think it's crazy right. to want to know how far and how wide the corruption at the FBI was, and that's what the president has asked the attorney general to find, okay. and we'll see what happens.